Many YouTubers make fantastic content, very quality videos, very funny and good at what they do, and still suffer from low subscriber count and lack of liked videos. You can be the difference. One like per day could change this young YouTuber's life. If you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing. Hit that like button on every video that you watch, and today, you could save a YouTuber. If you know a YouTuber out there who makes very good content and suffers, suffers from low subscriber count, act fast, act now. Hit that subscriber button. Let them know that they're not alone out there. Let them know that everything will be okay. There's many YouTubers like this one here who suffer from really good content, but not enough subscribers, not enough likes on their videos. So please, act now. Hit that subscribe button, click that like, ring the bell to be notified when their videos are up. And you, you could just save a YouTuber. Yo, k Face Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to class. Today, we are going to have a little discussion about speaker crossover. I've done many different videos on crossover, how to set it up, how to decide what's right for you, but I realized that until you truly understand what a crossover, a speaker crossover is and what it's doing, you may never ever set it right. So I wanna go in depth and talk about what crossover is as far as what a speaker crossover is from one speaker to another, what it's really doing to the sound, and I think once you get a really good understanding of it, you'll be able to correctly set it in your system. So let's talk about crossover and then we're gonna to go to the screen here and we're gonna actually put it in action so you guys can see what's going on. So what is a speaker crossover? Well, in short, a speaker crossover is a, a range of frequencies in which that speaker is allowed to play before it passes it on to another speaker. So that could be high frequencies or low frequencies, whatever speaker you may have. So most home theater systems have a subwoofer, maybe one, two, three, maybe four subwoofers or more. And you want to cross over your speakers so that the speakers are playing in their most comfortable range. So for example, I have some Canton Vintos. They have a range between 20 hertz up to I think 40,000 kilohertz. So they have a pretty um, broad range of performance. I also have two SVS PB4000 subwoofers which dig down to I think 13 hertz or something ridiculous like that. So they have a pretty deep register too. So what a crossover was gonna allow me to do is to let my speakers play where they're comfortable and then when it gets to the really, really low notes, we're gonna cross them downward to the subwoofer so that the subwoofer plays what it's supposed to and my speakers are free from strain so they don't have to play those really low notes that could potentially damage my speakers. Now the same thing goes and vice versa. My subs will be crossed over um, to the speakers so once the frequencies start to get too high in the registers, my floor standing speakers will take over those frequencies so that my subwoofer doesn't have to try to play um, too high of frequencies. So a crossover just allows that certain speaker to perform where it's most comfortable, where it's most present, where it's most natural. Because um, if you try to play a speaker too high in the frequency range or too low, you cause distortion, you cause coloration that takes away from the sound. Um, so you want speakers to play comfortable because that's how you add longevity to your equipment. Trying to play something that it's not supposed to will quickly deteriorate that cone, that driver, that motor, that amplifier, and you could see prematurely your system start to deplete. Right there are my Canton Vento A96.2, the speaker that gets down to 20 hertz up to 40,000 kilohertz. I have this speaker crossed over at 40 hertz. And what does that mean? Well, this speaker is gonna play from 40 hertz up to 40,000 kilohertz. But once it gets closer to that 40 hertz and starts going downward 35, 30, 25, the speaker is slowly gonna to start to roll off and the subwoofer is gonna take its place. So let's talk about the center channel. The center channel plays around 40 hertz up to 40,000 kilohertz as well. But we don't want the center channel playing sub frequencies. So we're gonna cross this one over say 60 hertz. So what does that mean? This speaker is gonna play 60 hertz and up. But once it starts getting down 55, 50, 45, it's gonna to start to roll off and pass it 
to the next available speaker, in this case, the Canton Vinto A96, the floor setting speakers. So once it gets to 60 here and starts to roll off, it starts to roll off to this speaker, which plays 60 down to 40. Once it gets to 40, it starts to roll off to the subwoofer, and now we have the subwoofer playing sub 40 frequencies. Um, so vice versa, if we're going upwards, let's say this, let's say I have a subwoofer, a, a PB4000, back there in the back corner there. My PB4000 plays 13 hertz, maybe up to 180 or something like that, correct? But we don't really want the subwoofer playing past 120. Because when you get a subwoofer playing high frequencies, you're asking that driver to move very, very quickly. And the bigger the driver, the harder that driver is going to have to work to move at fast frequencies. Um, subwoofers are not really meant to play higher than 120 hertz most times than not, um, because you don't want that speaker moving really, really fast because you're gonna start to get um, slow bass, lo late bass, inaccurate bass. So we have my subs crossed over too. So at 120 hertz, this sub starts to send the frequencies back to the floor, floor standing speakers because um, they're comfortable playing 120 hertz up to 40,000. That subwoofer is not comfortable playing much past 180 hertz. So we don't want it to have to try because then that's how we get an accurate bass. We get slow bass behind the beat. We want my speakers to handle where they're comfortable. So I have my front speakers set to 40 hertz. So they're gonna play 40 hertz all the way up to 40,000 kilohertz, okay? Um, but once it starts getting below 40, it's gonna start to roll off to the subwoofer. Now, when you set your crossover, you're not completely cutting off anything 39 and lower. It still plays 35, still plays 30, and maybe a little bit of 25, but at a very reduced dB level. So it's still playing those frequencies, but it's lowering those frequencies so that it's not straining the drivers, not really hearing a lot of distortion. It's cutting them off ever so slightly so that it doesn't destroy your speaker and that it gives the subwoofer a chance to do what it's built to do. Same thing with the center channel. I have it set to 60 hertz. Um, because really you don't want your voices to be sounding too muffled. If you have a really a real rumbly grumble kind of sound when you hear the human voice speak, then your crossover is set incorrectly. It could either be your center channel or it could be your subwoofer is too high, which we'll talk about soon. But I have my center channel set to 60 because for me, I like the voices to come through. Sometimes when you're watching a, like an action movie, there's a guy right in the middle of the screen shooting a gun, okay? So you want that dud, that boom, 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 to come through the center channel because um, you want that realism. You don't want to cut off the center channel too much and make it anemic sounding, especially with the male voice, which registers around 80 hertz. You want that speaker to be able to register um, the lower notes. Some men speak lower than 80 hertz. Some people speak down here, which is more like 75, 60 hertz. So you want your speaker to be able to reproduce a low, deep voice. You don't want to cut that off. Same thing with surround sound. Sometimes you get effects behind you that dig a little bit deep sometimes. I also have those set to 60 hertz. Um, sometimes a firework or a grenade in the background or a deep voice coming from the bottom right screen behind you. Um, you need that to also be relatively low so that you can get good reproduction of the human voice or some action. Um, so I have that set to 60 hertz for the same reason I do as the center channel. And then my Atmos speakers are set at 80. You're not really getting a lot of bass from the Atmos section. And typically when you're getting Atmos effects, it's probably a thunderstorm. It's probably a plane. It's probably a bird. Um, so you don't really um, need a lot of bass with those effects because typically if the Atmos section is on, your subwoofers are probably doing something too, unless you're getting like a bird or a butterfly or a bee flying past you, then you get zzz, zzz. So you don't really need bass, of course, for those kind of notes. Um, but more times than not, when the Atmos section is fired up, so is your subwoofer, the subwoofer will take care of the low frequencies. Speaking of subwoofer, how do you cross that up? Well, let's go down to the subwoofer section itself. You can actually set your subwoofer independently. Um, so some options for receivers, you have a subwoofer mode, either LFE, or LFE plus main. What does this mean? LFE means that you can set your subwoofer's crossover by itself, just like all your other speakers. So for me, I have mine set to 120 hertz. And why do I have it set so high, you may ask? It's easy. A lot of times when you're watching a 4K Ultra HD movie, there's some frequencies that play 120 hertz that the sound engineer wants the subwoofer to play because it wants to emphasize that certain thud, that certain note. It wants the subwoofer to give it its best rumble because it, the sound engineers want that certain scene, that certain moment emphasized. 
So yes, your floor standing speakers and stuff will take care of those notes, but sometimes the subwoofer gets delivered that frequency too to add emphasis. Now, if you put your subwoofer mode into LFE plus main, your subwoofer is now playing every single one of the notes that your front speakers are playing. Why would you want this on? Well, if your speakers aren't too bass heavy, if they don't really produce a lot of bass, you can ask your subwoofer to play a little bit of it too. So your speakers and your sub are playing the same frequencies until you reach the speaker crossover, which in this case is set to 40 hertz. Um, so your LFE plus main means they work together playing the same frequencies. LFE just means that your subwoofer is independently controlled um, so you can set its crossover by itself. In this case, mine is 120 hertz. All right guys, crossovers can be sometimes confusing, but if you know exactly what it's doing, then you'll be able to better set it for your speakers. So everybody knows 80 hertz is kind of the magic number, but if you really wanna fine tune and get the best performance out of your speakers, I recommend going in, checking the manufacturer specs, seeing what that speaker's range can actually perform at, and then set your speakers accordingly. Also, room acoustics help too, um, or not help in some cases. For example, maybe you have a lot of bass at a certain frequency. You don't want your subwoofer and all your speakers playing 80. If you have a gobs amount of 80 hertz presence, you may wanna take some speakers out of the equation and let maybe the subwoofer do 80, or maybe let the, the floor tanner, the floor speaker do 80, so that not all your speakers are giving you 80 and it's overwhelming. So it really just depends on your room. Don't let anybody set your crossover for you. It is 100% room acoustics, speaker performance, speaker placement, um, peaks and nulls, those factor into what you should set your crossover to. So my numbers may not be the same. You may have the exact same speakers with the exact same Marantz processor, but I promise you, your, your setup should not be similar to mine whatsoever because our rooms are different in how things perform and what we like to listen to. Um, so with that being said, guys, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what speakers you have and what crossover do you have them. Name me all your speakers and subwoofers, and then what crossover do you have for them? Let us know that down below, because I'm sure a lot of you guys have similar speakers to other people who are kind of curious on what you have your set to. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know what speakers you have and what did you set the crossovers to. Also, leave a like if you haven't already, and subscribe if you're not one already. We'll see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace. Thank you.